You know the vibes! Welcome back to another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast, brought to you by NBA 2K23. Myself, the one and only Momuti, alongside Mr. BJ Armstrong. Well, uh, hey, Mo, <laughs> let me put my dukes up. Let me put my, let me put my dukes up. Uh, let me so put listen, my dukes so listen, up. so listen. Hey, 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 a lot of people hey. ask me, yo, a lot of people ask me, like, Mo, you're always watching basketball. You're always talking about basketball. What else do you do in your, in your free time? Um, you know, outside of it, you know, I've got a lot of interest, you know, football, music. I used to box, I was a big boxing oh. fan. I think boxing's gone kind of shit now, so excuse my language. Um, but right. I'm a big UFC fan now. I watched a great UFC fight last night, in fact, okay. or the other night on Sunday night. Okay, okay. Israel Adesanya, okay. Israel Adesanya okay. knocked out his nemesis, Alex Pereira, and okay. you know, it's a really exciting fight. Uh, obviously, Pereira knocked him out before. He beat him also in kickboxing, and then Izzy finally got his revenge. And I was super excited after that fight. But BJ, it turns out the NBA was watching that fight, and a couple of the players got excited <laughs> by it too. Because I thought today was going to be a calm episode. A calm episode <laughs> where we talk about the player. Instead, uh... I don't want to say the players are doing UFC, because to me, it's more like <laughs> WWE. We got a few <laughs> things to discuss. Uh, well, Mo, we're we, gonna as, start, as we always do, let's get right into it. We're going to start with the notorious Frenchman, Mr. Oh. Rudy <laughs> Gobert. The man who the Minnesota Timberwolves leveraged the franchise of their future for. Traded away four billion and a half first round picks and a lot of their depth to go and get him from Utah. Guess what? The, he's been very underwhelming. The team has been very underwhelming this season. They end up playing. We thought, that okay, cool. When you make a move like that for an all-star caliber player, defensive player of the year, you're looking to be a top four seed with ease. You guys are in the playing. And guess what? If it wasn't for the heroics of Anthony Edwards, they'd be finishing the season as the ninth seed. They finished eighth, got the dub. Uh, in a very good game with uh, Brandon Ingram's New Orleans Pelicans, but that's besides the point. Because during the game, Rudy Gobert tried to punch his teammate, Kyle Anderson, when the two got heated against each other on the bench. And then, we'll go, we'll go straight in with this. And not only that, following that, a video has leaked, okay, from someone in the Timberwolves organization has leaked a video of Carl Anderson walking to the locker room. He says, the F is wrong with y'all. Y'all kiss his ass way too much to be telling me to focus. The F is wrong with y'all. Y'all got a decision to make this summer. So, BJ, when we talked about the teams most likely to win a championship <laughs> in the next five years, and you pick the Timberwolves, <laughs> we got to see if the Timberwolves are still together after this summer. Because <laughs> Carl Anderson don't think so. Give me your take. <laughs> they sent Rudy home, just for context. They sent him back to the locker room, and then they sent him home at halftime. And not only that, BJ, I don't know if you saw this, Jaden McDaniels was walking back to the locker room, and he punched a wall so hard, he has now fractured his hand. <laughs> now, I would understand this if you were on the Dallas Mavericks and you were missing the play-in. You guys have got a damn game to play against the Lakers for your spot in the playoffs. So now you're going to be without McDaniels. Now you're probably going to be without Rudy Gobert. I don't know if they're going to bring him back to play after he tried to punch his teammate. And Carl Anderson's clearly not very happy. What's your take on this punching episodes from the Timberwolves? Well, this is not good. Okay, this is this is not good because you're seeing emotions spilling over into the team dynamics and having emotions, you know, sometimes can be real good for your team. It keeps everyone on their toes and it can, you could take that energy and it can be channeled to a way that's, that's very productive for a team. However, to see this happen outwardly now, which you know, more I've, I've I've been in a few altercations myself over the years, mm -hmm. so things like this happen. So I don't want to be like, oh wow, what is this? It's just now. It's it's you know the cameras now, in particular cell phones, they're, they're capturing everything. Well, to be fair, the the instance on the bench and Jaden McDaniel's as well 
were captured by the broadcast on TV. Right. So it captures everything. And we're seeing this in real time. And now it's going to have some effect. Okay. So much so where they sent, I mean, to me, there were a couple of things that I saw today watching the game. Oh, we get I was into like, them. wow. <laughs> we're okay. going to get into them. <laughs> okay. But okay. There was an altercation on the Minnesota. There was an altercation on the Minnesota pitch. Okay. They sent one guy home. Like, wow. Is he, is like, he a I, child? Like, Go home. You've been naughty. Sit in your bedroom. No video games for a week, Mr. Gobert. I don't know. Yeah, I, I was like. Weird. Yeah, I, I that one kind of struck me. That was kind of <laughs> that's kind of weird to me, bro. I did okay. Um, I I don't know. I I don't know what to say. I I as you know, I I I look. I how could you not like, you know, you know Kyle. Kyle is he's a great guy. He's one of the most underrated players in the league, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, he's, I mean, he's, he's, I mean, he's a good guy. You know what I mean? Like he, not, not, a, not a good guy. He's a great guy. I mean, he's a great guy. Like he plays hard, plays his role, does his job. You know, he comes in. I mean, Kyle Anderson is just like, you know, he's a pro's pro, right? I mean, he, yeah. he, he fits into the role. You know, and I and I like Rudy. I, I like Rudy. I don't know him as well other than, you know, just a few passings. I don't know him like I know Kyle. So reportedly. Yeah, but no, I, I, just I, I, I don't know me. if this is true. Um, Let me find it because I had it. Someone, someone, someone in the discord put in what was said. Let me let me scroll up in the Discord. If you're not in the discord. You guys have got to got to get in there. Uh, after the bench incidents, Tim Walls, Rudy Gobert, and Kyle Anderson had a heated verbal exchange in the halftime locker room, and Anderson challenged the center at one point, saying, "I'll knock your ass out." So interesting uh, that Gobert is seven foot and uh, still seems very knock outable. Uh, Gobert later sent an apologetic text to his teammate in a group chat per Mike Conley, saying, "We'll speak about it and move on. We're grown men." Um. And so Woj went on ESPN and he said, this is what happened to leading to the altercation. Kyle Anderson said, why don't you block some shots? And Rudy Gobert said, why don't you grab a rebound? And then someone else reportedly said that he called him a bitch. Excuse the language on today's episode. Hope there's no kids who listening. Who, who, Kyle who Anderson he? said to, uh, to, to Gobert, with Gobert resulting in a punch. So that is the the T, as they call it. I don't know how valid those things are, but um, yeah, very interesting times. I mean, it's, it's a shame that that's the main story because it was a fantastic game of basketball. Anthony Edwards is a bona fide superstar. I don't care what anyone has to tell me. He is one of my favorite players to watch. I'll take him on my team any day. And I feel like he deserves better than the mess that the Timberwolves have put him in. He's this generation's Kevin Garnett, you know, stuck on this mess of a team. <laughs> so that happened, BJ. Do you think, uh, we'll get on to the play in in a sec. But then another altercation happened in the LA Clippers game, which was another great game against <laughs> the Phoenix Suns with Bones <laughs> Highland. And was it Mason Plumley who got into it on the bench as well? I'm not too sure what their altercation was about. If you've got any insight, let me know. Uh, but what did you make of that one? It's the last game of the season after 81 games. Now, all of a sudden. <laughs> and and it's not like you know. you, it's the end of the season. You guys have got to play the damn playoffs together. Well, I mean, here's the deal. Like, and I, and I get it. Within any family situation or family structure, there are going to be altercations. That's just inevitable. However, you know, it's there's 81 games, and now you're in game 82, and then suddenly now the last game of the season, you're figuring out, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm like, okay, I'm trying to imagine what could Plumley, Mason Plumley, and and Bones Highland be talking about. Like, what 
some guy licked another guy off. I, I doubt that. Mason Plumley is not an offensive player. So <laughs> he, I'm, he's assume it's bag a, I'm assuming it's probably a defensive rotation. Okay, that's good. You're talking about a defensive rotation. Someone missed the rotation, probably. I mean, it just seems it just seems this whole thing just seems odd to me. It just seems like a like a bad prop right now. You know, especially Minnesota, because they have, you know, you know, they made some moves. They made some trades. OK, clearly probably hasn't gone the way they think, but they're in the play in. And then. In the Clippers situation, it just it's like, like, OK, we got two guys who aren't starters. What do you what are you <laughs> arguing about? Like, what 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 are we arguing about? Like. Like, let's go over the tape and figure it out. Let's mm-hmm. go over You know what I mean? It's kind of like, it just doesn't make sense. However, they happen. And and like I said, I'm I'm not, look, I, I've, I've, look, I, I, unfortunately, I've been there. I understand it. And I think Mike Conley, I think that's what you said, you know, said, you know, we'll, we'll move on from this. And that's, that's what has to happen no matter what. They have to move on. And doesn't mean they'll have to like each other, but they'll have to move on from this because they both have to, you know, they got to both play. Well, Mike Conley, great veteran. Uh, speaking of veteran locker room presences, Udonis Hassam had his farewell game today in his final regular season game after a 20 year career. Uh, shout and out to U- UD. UD, PJ, I don't know if you watched the Miami Heat game. He hit a three, he threw down an alley. He dropped 24 points. Good Udonis Haslam, shout out. That Good was crazy. It was crazy, man. I was happy for UD. Um, but that's a lot of points. That's a lot of points in the last game of the season. That's a lot of points. The last game of the season is always you know? crazy. Even Cam Johnson had like 46. Like the last game of the season, the first game of the season, the last game of the season. Did Cam Johnson had 46? Oh, wow. I think wow. so. Unbelievable. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. So what oh, wow. that does leave us with is it leaves us with a finalized playoff bracket. Now, we're going to have a look at it. The playoff matchups, some of them are set now. So we're going to have the Cavs and the Knicks. That's the 4-5 matchup in the East. 4-5 matchup in the West is the Clippers and the Suns. The 3-6 matchup in the East is the Sixers and the Nets. 3-6 in the West is the Kings and the Warriors. And we're going to talk about those in another episode where we do a play-off preview. Today, we're going to do a play-in preview as the Milwaukee Bucks, Boston Celtics, Denver Nuggets, and Memphis Grizzlies don't know who they're playing yet. BJ, you want to start in the East or the West? Let's start in the East, my friend. Let's start East. The seventh seed was taken by Udonis Haslam's Miami Heat, where they will face the Atlanta Hawks. Who do you think is winning that play-in game? Because the winner gets to take on the Boston Celtics. I'm going to say the Heat. Yeah. I'm going to say the Heat. I'm going to take the Heat. Yeah. I just don't see anyone stopping Jimmy Butler in that game. And I'm going to say the Heat. I'm not a big Trey Young believer, as you know, so I'm going to roll with the Heat for that. And then that means the Hawks would lose and they would go on to play the winner of the Bulls versus the Raptors. Who do you think is winning that matchup? Because the Bulls' defense, as Patrick Beverly's got there, has been very good. The Raptors have been largely disappointing. They've got a lot of things to figure out about their future. Um, they kind I, of I mean, that's a, these, they, those are always toss-up games. I'm going to say Toronto because I think they're a better defensive team. I'm just going to say Toronto. I'm going to okay. say Toronto, but it's a toss-up game. And where, then, the, where's that game played at? In Toronto, right? Yeah. And then the the winner the the winner of that gets to face the Atlanta Hawks if they lose to the Heat. So the Raptors and the Hawks for the eighth seed. And I Who, think the Bulls will beat Atlanta. I think the Bulls will beat Atlanta. But what about the Raptors if they play Atlanta? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Toronto, I think will be beat Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm, I want to say Toronto. I'm just going to say Toronto. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Toronto. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say Toronto. So you think that the Miami Heat are getting the uh, seven seed and the Toronto Raptors are the ones who are going to be taking the eight seed to play seed. the Milwaukee Bucks. So over in the West, the Lakers got the seven seed after a season where a lot of people, including including everyone, thought that they would end up missing the playoffs. They managed to figure it out in the end. And they're going to be taking on the very dysfunctional Minnesota Timberwolves, who may be without Jaden McDaniels and maybe even Rudy Gobert. I'm going with the Lakers. In oh, that shock. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lakers qualified to play the Memphis Grizzlies, the two seed, which I think is very winnable for the Lakers, but that's another conversation. 
The Grizz, uh, the the Timberwolves lose that, and they play the winner of OKC versus New Orleans. Who do you like for that one? The Pelicans New Orleans and OKC. No Zion. He will not be back. Oh, wow. And I Ooh, don't think they're going to have one. Alvarado either. I'm just going to, I'm. I, you know what? I'm just going to take the, the, I think OKC has better energy right now. On the road? I, 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 you know what? Yeah, I'm I'm going to take OKC. I'm going to just okay. take, I'm going to take Shea, Giddy. I just think they're, you know, the energy. You know, New Orleans, I don't know what happened to New Orleans. So, you know, I'm, I, I you know, I, 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 I. <sighs> I'm gonna take. I'm gonna just go OKC. I'm. Just, I don't know why. I don't even have a reason. I'm just gonna take them, right now. I think they should be excited. I think they want to be there. I mean, it's great. I mean, think about this. This is great for their team to have be playing for something at this stage of the season. I think it's great for them. So I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna take, take them on, just inexperience. Like, what do they have to lose? I'm just I'm play gonna free. Take just one place. The Pelicans okay. seven and three in their last ten. Brandon Ingram has been playing sensational basketball. I think how many did he have? How many points did he have tonight? Because he absolutely balled out. He had uh what what did, what did he have tonight? Brandon Ingram dropped 42, 12 boards and seven assists in a game that they narrowly lost against the Timberwolves. I like okay. the Pelicans in that. And then we'd have OKC or New Orleans versus the Timberwolves. If you had OKC versus the Timberwolves, do you think they could win that? I think OKC. I'm Shea going OKC. versus Ant. Okay. I'm going OKC. What about I'm the going, Pelicans just, versus the Timberwolves? I'm going Pelicans. I've got whoever, because they, they lost the, the one kid. They lost the, the one kid for Minnesota today, you know, with the broken. Uh, McDaniels, yeah. McDaniels, yes. Yes. Okay, so you've got the Lakers coming in seventh, and you've got the OKC Thunder coming in eighth. Well, I've got eighth. the Pelicans yeah, coming in eighth. Where. Very interesting, BJ. Do you like, as, as you know, an older generation of NBA star, do you like the play-in and what it's added to the regular season? What it's added I, I, to the season I'm in general? Al- I'm always open for change, all right? I, you know, I, I consider myself a life learner, right? I consider myself, I'm open for a change. However, you know, I mean, you know, if you're asking me my opinion, what, what was wrong with the previous? <laughs> okay, what was wrong with the previous way? Well, well this- I mean, you could argue. You could argue now load management. You could you you could argue there's been a shift in ideas and way of thinking now. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get that. I understand. Um, so I think, and I want to say this: when Commissioner Silver brought this up, I said, "Listen, he, the league had to do something about this shift in idea with with. I mean, let's call it what it is with tanking." Mm-hmm. And this is one of the first, probably, of many things. You got to try something. And I, I think it's great because OKC would have tanked the season if it weren't for this because they weren't going to get in top eight seed. But they thought that they could get into the play. Crazy to me, yeah. Yeah, which seems, I mean, it just seems crazy to me. However, it is what it is. And I, 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 I you know, I, that's, I don't understand it. I don't understand the whole tanking thing. Well, that's just me. So I want to applaud the league for doing something. They recognize it and they got to do something about it. And this might be the best thing right now before they eventually figure it out at some stage in the future or sometime in the future. But overall, they had to do something. So, you know, I give the league, give Commissioner Silver credit for doing that. How important is the uh, momentum ending the season? You know, like, the way that you finish the season, for example, the Bucks lost their last two. Obviously, they're resting a lot of their guys. The Knicks lost their last two games. Um, over in the West, the the Kings have lost their last three. The Suns have lost their last two. How much do you think momentum weighs into going into the postseason, even if it isn't your main guys playing? Well, Ma, I just want to remind you this. The regular season is over. doesn't matter. The, mm-hmm. the record is 0-0. Zero, zero, okay, mm-hmm. so I want to remind you of this. You know, the ego, our minds, we love to find trends and then we pick up on the trend and then we love to make our argument of why we're right. Okay, here's the truth. And, you know, this is probably the former player of me. I really didn't care about the regular season from this regard. Like whatever you did the regular season, 
you did it. You accomplished it. You got through the 82. Now the real games begin. You can go 82 and 0, and then you lose the first game of the playoffs. You're in trouble at home. So right now you're 0 0. Hopefully, if you played this 82 games to prepare yourself from the battles you're about to have, because the games are going to be played at a higher intensity. Okay. There's going to be pressure in every possession. And everyone's trying to, and you're going to condense these games in a short amount of time. Okay. So what you did in the regular season was the regular season and you played against teams. Some of those teams, you might be eight, you might be eight and two in the last 10 games, right? Oh, this, this is the hottest team coming into the league, but they don't tell you that eight of those teams that you beat weren't, didn't make the playoffs. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. What matters is, do you have the ability to match up versus the team that you ever, who you're matching up with? And can you take away something? Okay. The the teams who can take away something. Mo is a post player. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to take that away in the playoffs. I'm going to force him to go to his counter to whatever it is I'm going to take away. And then when you get to the second round, you got to take away two teams because that team who advanced is going to be a better defensive team than you saw in the first round. When you get to the conference finals, Mo, you're going to know everything about that team. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have to take away one, two, and three. And at some point there, you're going to get to a game where the other team is not going to be able to counter what you're doing. That's why you're going to win that series in the conference finals. And then once you get to the finals, Mo, it's about will. Who's got the will to figure out something? Sometimes, Mo, you might figure it out in game one. Sometimes you might figure it out in game two at halftime. But when you do figure it out, Mo, you'll see this shift in the playoffs, and you and I will talk about it. And you don't know why it happened. Just like we saw the Golden State Warriors figured out something last year about your Boston Celtics. Um, and when they, I remember when they went and to Boston and they won game four. Five was it? Game four? Game four and game, four and game six. Game four, yeah. They felt they won the championship. I remember that. I was like, oh, but they must have figured out something. Yep. They figured it out. You don't know when it's going to happen. So – I'm going to look in, in, in the first round here and see, Mo, who could take away something. That, to me, is always the first indication in the in the first round. Who can take away something? Because when you're playing against teams who aren't going to be in the playoffs, okay, the teams, and it's the reason those teams have bad records, they can't take away anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay? And you get up and down, you play. So I would love to think, Mo, that going into the playoffs, those things do matter. But I'm going to tell you something. Steve Kerr, to me, without saying this in the press conference, he said it best, okay? I'm just going to read something to you, Mo, that to me was fascinating. Okay. It was it was fascinating, okay? The Warriors today scored 157 points. Yeah, I, I just want to say real quick, the NBA is opening their investigation against the Dallas Mavericks for not playing their guys in the last game, so tanking away the last game. They need right. to open a damn investigation on the Portland Trailblazers. They lost by 56 points. They've been resting okay. Dame at, for a while. At home. At yep. home. I'm They've at been churning okay, out lineups home. where, bro, I don't know. But if you're going to investigate okay. the Mavericks, investigate everyone else. Okay. So, but here's the thing. I'm just going to go through their starters. DiVincenzo, 21 minutes. Green, Draymond, 19 minutes. Looney, 21 minutes. Clay Thompson, 21 minutes. Steph Curry, 22 minutes. Now, that's important because you know why? Mm -hmm. He knows that you can't win without being in condition. You can choose to rest a guy. But, Mo, there's no replacement for conditioning, game conditioning. Mm -hmm. The fact that Steve Kerr, Coach Kerr, as I like to call him, has the presence of mind to get his guys ready, knowing very well the work is always done on the court. That's why it doesn't make sense to me on any level of the load management thing. Mm -hmm. You have to play. Yes, There's no way to get better. There's no way to get any rhythm. There's no way to get, you know, chemistry. There's no way to play. There's no way to practice unless you do it in the game at game speed. 
knowing very well that they're about to get into the playoffs now and the games are going to be played at a higher level than they were played at the regular season. Yeah. So give those guys credit for what they're doing, how they did it, and now those guys are ready. Now, whether or not they win or not, it's not because they weren't prepared for this. They're mm -hmm. prepared for the moment. So I don't believe that there's, you know, what you did in the playoffs – you know, Mo, we saw teams, you know, last year, for instance, they come in, they got the best regular season record. They got the best season, you know, Phoenix Suns. and then they don't win it. Mm -hmm. they, and then and they get knocked out. So it doesn't yep. really matter. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I say about that. It was a wild day around the association. I'm going to read some more things that happened today to you. Obviously, you're done size 24, Cam Johnson size 46. Speaking of post players, you said Mo's a post player. One of my favorite players is Kenny Lofton Jr., and he dropped 42 points. The big oh, body well, yeah, in Memphis, yeah, 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 he dropped 42. That's my spirit animal right there. I need a Kenny Lofton <laughs> Jr. jersey. That's my guy. That's me. Peyton Pritchard put up a 30-point triple-double. Theo Pinson had a triple-double. Um, but then two coaching changes happened. Dwayne Casey is out as the Pistons head coach, and Steven Silas is out right. as the Rockets head coach. Right. What do you think of those right. moves? You know, um, Steven Silas let go with still 27.4 seconds left in a Rockets game, which was weird. But um, you know, it's a tough break that they didn't pick up the fourth year on his on his contract. He's had some some not so good rosters. Um, let's start with the Pistons. Dwayne Casey out. Who do you think that they're looking at? Because the favorite is Ime Odoka. Right. Um yeah, I, I mean, you know, listen, I I'm you know, when you've been in this business for as long as I have have been, you know, you especially you know, good people, right? You know. Dwayne Casey, no, by the Casey. way, is, is not fired. He's moving to the front office. Yeah, so he's he's a, he's you know listen, he's a good guy, and you know I've been on Coach Casey for for quite some time, and then Coach Silas. I I mean I I, I played for his dad. I've been knowing him since he was a kid, and then so it's just you know it, it's like there's a human side of it. Okay, so the human side is like man, these are good people, man, good good people. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're good people. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you don't like to see things like this happen to, to, you know, good people. However, um, this is the business that we're in. Right. And if you don't win, you know, listen, things happen and you, you, you move on. So uh, hopefully both of those guys will, will land uh, back on their feet. But, you know, um, you know, I think both of these teams now, uh, talking about the Houston Rockets and the Detroit Pistons, they are looks like clearly they're making a a shift, and the shift is the you know the the you know the acquiring draft picks and all those things is over. So now I'm looking for those teams to drastically improve mm -hmm. their competitive spirit from a year from now. Yeah. So I don't know what that means, but. What that means, what I think what they're saying is, okay, we've gone through that process. And they got some great young pieces, the, both of those teams. Yeah, both of them have great. I mean, listen, when you look at when you look at the Houston Rock, you know what's funny about the Houston Rock? I was just looking at their team the other day. They beat like all the good teams in the league. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, they think that's going to be an easy ride. And then they yeah, yeah. they they beat all the they beat all the good teams, the playoff teams, but then they lose to the teams they probably but but that's because they're young and they just don't know. But clearly, they have talent that can rise to the occasion. That's the encouraging yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I have a plea for the Rockets. Whoever takes that job, please, can you play Alperin Sengun some more minutes and maybe play him in the fourth quarter because he is a special talent. I don't know how much you watch of Alperin Sengun, BJ, but everyone yeah, loves I, Nikola I, I Jokic. Them. You got a junior version right there. That's what I'm saying. Well, it, you know, it, it, it's all about getting the team together and here here's a here's the hard thing about young players you have these both of those organizations you know when you look at the pistons okay and 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 when you look at the pistons and you look at the rockets you look at their individual talent their individual talent you go they got some nice pieces over there mm -hmm. so both of those teams right when you look at the pistons you go wow this guy jay nivey I mean, he'll probably be first team all NBA this year. I mean, all rookie, rookie yeah, all yeah. rookie this year. 
Then you look at Dern, you go, okay, you know what? That guy's a talent. You know, then they acquire Wiseman. You know, they'll get Cade back, another young. I mean, they have some. And then you look at, you know, Jalen Green, and you look at those guys over there, and you go, they got some nice, they got some nice players. Now, here's the here's the hard part, Bo. How do you go from having great individual talent to becoming a great team? Mm-hmm. That if you know the answer to that, now you're now you're cooking. So the encouraging thing about both of these franchises, they have great individual talent. Yeah. But Mo, how do you become a great team? That to me is the transition with becoming a young player in this league. And, and, and it was best explained to me, Mo, my first day on the job when I came in the league, you know, it was like, Hey, Hey Rook, how long is it going to take you to become a pro? That's mm-hmm. the key. Mo. And I didn't have a choice because I came to a veteran squad roster. Mm-hmm. I came to a veteran team and I had to make a decision on day one on whether or not I was going to try to explore or who I was going to be as an individual talent or figure out how to play with this great team. Yeah. And I didn't have really a choice. So I get how difficult that is for some, but I'm telling you the talent is there for both. So I, I I'm excited to see how these young teams or these young talented players evolve because that's what the game is all about. Right. And, <laughs> and I, and I think now the both organizations have made, the outward move to move in the next step or the next phase of their growth um, and their organizations, because they, they they have some really terrific, talented individuals. When you talk about, you know, the Detroit Pistons and the Houston Rockets. Absolutely. Um, And they've got to make the decision if they're going to be uh, NBA players or WWE superstars, because I think Mr. Gobert is trending towards WWE. Uh, But that's been another episode of the Hoop Genius podcast. Stay with us. We've got more coming up. We've got the play in happening this week. We've got the NBA playoffs time very soon. And tomorrow you guys will hear my interview with Alan Iverson, which we had some technical issues with, but it's finally ready for you guys to listen to. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the show, follow the show wherever you listen and get your podcasts. Make sure you stay locked in and most importantly, above everything else, get buckets.